become your own knitting factory. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Blotto for MediaMonica.com, and we've got that sewing good news, and we've got some suing good news here on your Good News Next Week, where we look at some of the ways that we are winning, solutions-oriented, good kind of stories. First up on this episode 79, court rules government must refund millions in red light camera fines. Now, this is something that follows up on just our previous episode of Good News Next Week about people pushing back against the very not awesome red light cameras. Take away the political corruption, bribery scandals, increased accidents, police state issues with red light cameras, and you're still left essentially with a system that's rooted in the removal of due process. After the corporatist red light camera industry spread through the nation like a cancer for more than a decade, easily more than a decade, people are finally beginning to realize their inherently despotic nature, eh, kind of. The city of New Orleans is now on the hook to repay more than 200,000 drivers who've fallen victim to the city's entirely unconstitutional red light camera system. Drivers who have gotten one of the expensive $110 to $150 tickets between the years 2008 and 2010 are now due a refund plus interest, because usury's awesome, according to a recent court ruling. So the other stories here in our first set of stories, I guess, looks at the sort of pushback that happens in, in some different ways. Pushback as far as statism goes. New York cops protest Pantaleo's firing by hassling fewer people, and crime is still going down. The police unions attempt to punish the city for dismissing Daniel Pantaleo, you know, the guy that murdered Eric Garner. So what the police union is doing is basically not doing a bunch of kind of the petty stuff. The petty stuff that we certainly don't want them doing at any stretch. And it basically shows, again, when you take the cops away, they want you to think that everything's going to fall apart, but ultimately it's like, no, we're fine. And of course, aside from what all the mainstream media would have you to, at least the yapping ones, the actual data says, of course, you know, crime is falling. Crime has been falling. Overall trends are down, down, down for crime pretty much across the board. But the thin blue line doesn't want you to know that. So interesting stuff going on in New York City as essentially they're hassling less people. So that's pretty much good news. The last one is kind of a funny one. Did Ohio lawmakers accidentally legalize marijuana? Top law enforcers say yes. And when you dig into this story, it basically is what a lot of cities have done. The city of Columbus, Ohio will no longer prosecute misdemeanor marijuana cases because it ain't worth it anymore. They pretty much know that it is over in the last sort of breaths of what we've known as pot prohibition is over. Now, unfortunately, it's going to grow and metastasize and the powers that shouldn't be are still going to seek to control it in all the new legalized ways. And remember, black markets matter. Our second set of stories this week on Good News Next Week, episode 79. I guess I shouldn't say this week. I should say this time. It is difficult to make good news episodes week in, week out, you guys. As you might know, there's not a ton of good news. So sometimes it takes me a little while to get these, get these episodes together. So I hope you appreciate that. But I appreciate all the people who reach out to say, man, more good news. That's one of the main things I think we need in alternative media. So we'll keep rocking it. Second set of stories here on your good news next week. Groped by the TSA? Me too. And finally, we can sue them. A U.S. federal appeals court sided with the people, finally. The court ruled that travelers can sue the Transportation Security Administration, you know them, you hate them, the TSA, for abuse of conduct in a 9-4 decision. The third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia said Transportation Security Administration screeners were investigative or law enforcement officers for purposes of searching passengers, waiving the government's usual immunity from lawsuits. Circuit Judge Thomas Ambrose said the intimate physical nature of airport screenings brought them within the ambit of law enforcement, allowing travelers to pursue some civil claims under the Federal Tort Claims Act for intentional wrongdoing. He downplayed concern that the decision would open the floodgates to litigation, saying that in 2015, fewer than 200 people out of more than 700 million people groped filed complaints that might trigger the waiver. Holy moly, I've got some, got some TSA action and then some coming up soon. I'm <sighs> bracing myself for it. I think it'll be okay though. 
So even still, this second set of stories on this Good News Next Week episode is about pushing back, again, in different ways and in legal ways. Thanks for giving us rights back that were never yours to take or dangle with in the first place. We've talked about this before, the right to repair. I think we've talked about it specifically as it concerned actually John Deere gardening and farming equipment. But now, of course, it's Apple, you know, the the TV channel. Apple now lets independent repair businesses fix your iPhone. Weeks after defending its iPhone battery certification warning, Apple said it'll give more independent repair businesses the same genuine parts, tools, training, repair manuals, and diagnostics that its authorized service providers have access to so they can handle common out-of-warranty repairs. Basically, all these things, you know, I've set up for where you can't fix anything. And this is the very Brave New World Huxleyan sentiment. The ending is better than minting. Don't don't fix something on your, for yourself. And now I realize this third part of the second segment essentially became my cover story for this episode because I think it's the one I like the most because it seems to be the most disruptive. And again, as a lot of these Good News Next Week ideas through all the years in the episodes, it's a lot about ideas and not just some patentable thing that someone owns, it's ideas, and those are the things that spread. You can start to share out your car or your apartment, and you don't have to go through any of the big box places that seem to have the monopoly in doing that. Again, it's the idea, it's the freedom idea, and that's the thing that's really awesome and contagious. So what I'm really excited about, this will be fun to get into a little bit more in the future. And remember, in past Good News Next Week episodes, we've talked about, uh, you know, the ending fast fashion, a clothing library, those sorts of things. MIT working on AI knitting software that'll let anybody make their own clothes. A team of researchers at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, led by computer scientist Alexandria Kasparov, released two new papers describing software. One is about a system called Inverse Kit that automatically creates patterns from photos of knitted items. The other one introduces new design software called CADKNIT, C-A-D-K-N-I-T. You maybe have heard of the sort of uh, drafting architecture software CAD, and those are used in lots of other ways as well, of course, in theater and production and in all sorts of ways. Again, Now we might get this ourselves and make our own clothes. CADNIT allows people with no knitting or design experience to quickly customize templates, adjusting the size, final shape, and decorative details. Now again, much like 3D printing, it all might come down to what materials are you using? Where are you getting those from? If you're just making a bunch of crap out of nasty-ass plastic, that might not be the most solution-oriented way that we want to do it. But think about all the old clothes that if you could just send them through a shredder and then turn them back out into, you know, gloves and things you might need. I really like that story. Let's move to our third and final set of stories here on your good news next week. And man, you know, I I don't know how many of you do the streaming platforms or at least have a password to do the streaming platforms. Bob Ross is all over those things, man. You can just put it on and just (sighs) kind of chill out to the happy little trees of Bob Ross. He is still helping people, helping inmates plant happy little trees at state parks. This is one of those not unmitigated good news stories that involves too many different hands. But again, we like the sentiment. In celebration of their 100th birthday, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources reached out to Bob Ross Incorporated and asked if they wanted to help out. State's Department of Corrections manages a prison grow career and education program in which inmates get the opportunity not to learn to code, but to learn to farm horticulture practices and raise trees for reforestation efforts, particularly at state parks. Every year, inmates from three of Michigan's correctional facilities help grow about a thousand new trees from native seeds that have been collected by volunteers. Again, it's the idea of the story that I love. And come on, you can't chill out to some happy little trees with Bob Ross. Last couple of bits here on your Good News Next Week episode. This could be its own standalone story. I know one that'll get a lot more attention again, because it's the idea. Families choose homeschooling over vaccination. News 10 NBC WHEC in Rochester, New York, is investigating the impact of the state law that says every child in school, medically eligible, has to have the measles vaccine. State legislature got rid of the religious exemption in June, as everybody's doing, much like stores are telling people what they can and can't bring into their stores anymore. Now... New York is finding parents are keeping their kids home and homeschooling them, something they've never done before. And that, I think, is the real kind of crux of it, is that people are moving in new ways to do things they haven't done before 
because they've done the other thing before and have seen the results. The last little bit of good news will squeeze right in. EPA to begin phasing out animal testing and funding studies for more humane research methods, directing the agency to aggressively reduce animal testing, including reducing mammal studies requests by 30% by 2025 and completely eliminating them by 2035. Again, I think all of these stories at the end in our third segment talk about new ways to essentially do old things and we don't need to use a bunch of products that again if you're using a product that has to kill rabbits to see if it's okay it's pr probably not okay <laughs> we laugh to not cry sometimes so that's our look for the 79th time at some of the ways that we are winning good news next week episode and i'll remind you if you didn't know maybe if you haven't checked out all of our awesome broadcasts these last weeks September 11th, a couple days ago, was our 14th anniversary. Media Monarchy's been online now for 14 plus years, and it is independent, fear-free, ad-free, news, music, memes, and more. If you've never supported our work, if you've checked us out, if you've heard us here, seen me crazy on the New World Next Week, I've been doing it, been doing it for a long time. Would appreciate your support. People use the post office box. I got crypto donations just this past week. Again, people are reaching out and looking for you know new ways to do old things. I basically stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. You guys might know I've got 25 years of radio experience. I've essentially built my own radio station at home. I think it's like the best damn radio station you've never heard. So I'll quit the hard sell and wrap this baby up. Good news next week, episode 79. I am James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Again, saying thank you so much for listening and watching. Thank you even more for supporting our work. And of course, I'd like to remind you, as always, like Jello Offer says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.